Hi guys, Rob Gluck here, Three Hammers Golf Complex and Golf Academy, and welcome back to uh, Facebook Live with tips on Tuesdays. Apolo apologies about the slight delay there, we had some technical issues there uh, going live. Uh, today um, I've got a new partner in crime. Uh, today we have our very first female PGA golf coach here at the Three Hammers, so I'm going to let uh, you introduce yourself. Yep. So my name's Olivia, Olivia Reinbold. So I'm now one of the um, academy instructors here at the Three Hammers. I started my PJ uh, last September now, so just over a year ago. Past first year, went great, really enjoyed it. Um, so now at the minute, um, in year two, so through year one I did a lot of assisting with the guys here, um, gapping sessions, etc. But now I've passed another first year, I can, uh, I'm now able to coach, so having a great time with that at the moment and uh, in, really enjoying it. So uh, I think it's truth be known, Liv, you've been here forever, haven't you? Uh, yes. So uh, you've been a member of the academy team <laughs> yeah. for uh, forever, it's yeah. assisting me for many, many years, so now it's a great to officially have you mm -hmm. on board of the team and uh, actually get out there and uh, start coaching. Definitely. We've got some super uh, junior groups you work with at the moment, yeah. and uh, you really have been the face for uh, the face, face of Trackman as well for the, uh, for the complex. So um, many, many uh, gapping sessions, as you say, mm -hmm. you've, you've delivered in the last 12 months. So. Okay, so with that in mind, we're gonna, that's what we're going to talk about in today's yeah. session, guys. Uh, thanks so much. We've had some brilliant feedback uh, from um, all of our, our viewers, subscribers, uh, clients. Um, give us such great feedback from the Facebook Live. Uh, last week was a uh, super session with Kyle. We've officially given Kyle a day off. However, he is here. Um, he's with us today. He's going to be in the background. He's watching it all unfold today. So Kyle's been brilliant. So he's had his hat trick of Facebook Lives. Today, uh, we're going to be talking about distance control, aren't we, with our, uh, with our wedges. Uh, just of late, certainly when I've been coaching, uh, a number of my clients have been saying, uh, Rob, uh, I don't seem to hit this far, obviously, you know, for, for many reasons. The, uh, the ground's much softer, so we're not getting the actual roll on the golf ball, it's actually plugging and stopping. Uh, we've got lots of layers on as well, so that's going to really affect our, our club speed and our ball speed and our distances. Uh, but also as well, it's getting colder that golf ball is not flying um, as far through the, uh, through the air. So, Liv, I know just lately you've been, uh, you've had quite a few guys and girls come in for, uh, for gapping sessions, yeah. haven't you? Yeah. So, have you noticed quite a big difference with what you've seen from previous sessions with them? Definitely, 100%. I mean, um, you, I, I always say to them, especially when we do the gapping sessions, when they're coming now for the winter gapping sessions, we'll change the settings on the track man. So, yeah, we can make it colder, can't yeah, we? You can, yeah. make, you can make it colder, so like Rob just said, uh, the temperature can make a difference in how, huge, how yeah. a huge difference how far the ball can travel and the distance it actually flies. And I think all the guys here um, would all agree when we have our lessons come in, they go, oh, I'm not, I'm not hitting it anywhere, I've lost distance, yeah, yeah. you know. And I think it's having that understanding what temperature can make a difference to the golf ball and how it can fly. Um, so we're going to go through that today with uh, hit right. some wedge shots and explain the difference in their temperature. Yep, brilliant. I think here as well with, with a short course of three hammers it lends itself obviously perfectly into uh, to distance control and certainly when I've gone out onto the golf course with uh, some of my golfers, uh, elite golfers and, you know, and club golfers, um, the Alex short course finds them out, especially with those awkward 70 yarders, 80 yarders. So, we're going to start off by getting to hit some full shots, Liv, yep. and seeing how far the ray bomb hits it. <laughs> um, so we're going to, uh, uh, yeah, so we're going to watch you a few uh, yeah. full shots. What wedge have you got there? Um, I've got a 50, I've got a, I've got a few wedges with me today. Okay, so we'll start with the 50, which yep. uh, for, for uh, so the 50 degree wedge is yep. your... It's my 100 yards full. Yeah, gap wedge. Gap wedge, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so the fifth, a, lot, a lot of a lot of golfers that they've got the pitching wedge and their sand wedge and they're not too familiar with that one that fills the gap. I mean that's that's so. another thing, especially when doing gapping sessions. I've noticed. I think a lot of guys need to understand that you can have diff you don't have just a pitching wedge and a sand wedge. You can sure. have gap wedges. You can have lob wedges, and there is a big gap in between them through loft. And we'll, you'll see that today, difference in distance yeah. we get with the different wedges. On average, between your eyes, you've got four degrees yeah. of loft on average, haven't you now? Between your standard pitching wedge, which is 47 degree, yeah. and your standard sand line, which is 56 degree. Yeah, there's, there's a big gap there. Nine yeah. degrees. Yeah. yeah, nine degrees, so big gap. Okay, yeah. so we're going to hit some, four, uh, yeah. some wedges first of all. 
Um, so I'll let you hit a few uh, looseners. Now, with the contact theme, continuing the contact theme from the last week's session, the magic foot spray is back. So we're going to have a look at see exactly where Eva is striking her wedges. Now, we've just got the trackman set up purely now on carry distance. So with looking to see how far this is going through the air. So that one now is 97.4 yards. Great question last week, by the way, about the, uh, uh, the Three Hammers team golfer, uh, the combination, who would we have? I took a little bit of stick for not choosing Olivia for driving, by the way, for last week, so 101 yards there. I was devastated, bro. He was devastated, yeah. <laughs> I'll soon backtrack a little before, <laughs> before it was out. I think it's important to say, uh, whilst we're hitting full wedges, uh, can you just describe how hard are you going at it, like percentage-wise, you know, 100% that you swing off your feet, you know? I think when I swing, I was going about 80%, I never, I never, especially with wedges, I would never go full on, you know, crazy, 110% yeah. or so wedge. You'd say, yeah, so if, if you say 100% swing off your feet, you say about 80, 85, something yeah, like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, the harder we get it, the more we spin it. Yeah. yeah. Can we spray up there? See where we give a bit of a contact test here. So under pressure now. Under pressure. Kyle passed this with flying colours last week. <laughs> Kyle's the striker of the group. <laughs> okay, we've got a lost ball. Okay, so where was that strike wise? We really have got a lot of. So that, that was a bit skinny, that one, so. A little bit lower. Yeah, a bit heavy, a bit a little, skinny. A little bit lower at the club yeah. face. Again, guys, when talking about uh, distance control for your wedges, it's absolutely essential that we find in the centre of the club face. That was better. That was there better. Yeah, that was a little bit yeah, yeah. <laughs> Great. So, just those uh, few shots there, uh, Liv, which, which you just hit. Yeah. Uh, if we take a look, on average there, you're, you hit five shots, on average there, your average carry was 102.8 yeah. yards. Okay, so if, uh, let's say for example, you wanted to take a little bit off these wedges now, uh, rather than swinging it slower, what we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about the hold. So not, we're not changing anyone's golf grip at all, but what we're actually going to be talking about now is Perhaps so. You hit it, if you could just grip a golf club, I think you're going to hit a full shot for me. Yeah. Olivia, yeah. So a full, nice full shot with a wedge. Yeah. Now, if we can just take a look, if we just raise the hands up here. So here, uh, Olivia's approximately got, if she was to say remove her right hand here, approximately two finger gap here. Would you say that? Yeah. yeah. So you gripping the golf club at full length, we've still got a, yeah. a two finger yeah. gap there. Yeah? yeah. So what we're going to do now, we've seen you're gripping it at full length with your 85 or 80 percent swing, with on average going 102 point eight yards. Can we grip it down a little bit there? So we're going to grip down a little bit, same length of golf swing, Olivia. Yeah. And we're going to actually, before we do that, I've got to show this to the camera. Look at that strike mark right there. Yeah, I don't know if you can pick that one up, but it's right out the centre of the club. We'll ignore the one that's lower there. So down the, uh, the club face. Sorry, down the grip a little bit. So we're going to go take three fingers, even four fingers down the, down the golf grip, and just see how that will take away a little bit of yardage. Strike. Obviously, gripping the golf club uh, lower makes the golf club shorter. Can affect strike, so we've got to make sure that we maintain posture throughout. That's a lovely one there. It's actually gone further. <laughs> yeah, it can right out the centre of the club face. There we go. There we go. So that was struck. Lovely, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah. So again, but if we strike in the golf ball pretty central the majority of the time, Olivia's yardage is there was at the oak was uh, was one. Like a, what, 102, yeah. 102. Yeah. Now straight away, just by gripping it down, it's come down to 96.8 yards there. Okay. Do you want to go again to prove that yeah. wasn't it? Wasn't Blue. a fluke. <laughs> so the strike marks now are all coming around the centre of the club face as well, which is great for uh, controlling that distance. Yeah, 96.1 yards, okay? Great, so now, so Olivia's got some, uh, straight away there, we've got uh, two sets of distances, haven't we? We've got yeah. the, the full, uh, full length grip distances and we've got the, the, the kind of choke down, but yeah. the, the swing rhythm and speed, exactly the same. Yeah, by making a golf club shorter, naturally it's going to slow that club, 
uh, plug, that, plug head down a bit and reduce that ball speed. Yeah. Okay, so what else do you do, Olivia, then, to actually control your distance? So I have reference points of how far I'm going back. Okay. So yeah. you see uh, a lot of amateur golfers, they can try and control distance through the speed of Sure, yeah, Speed yeah. Of swing. Big fault we've seen a lot of golfers, yeah. 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 So with that, you're getting consistent strides and consistent results. Yeah. And just, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be a hard task to do that. So, for example, if we've got 50 yards and you're still making that same length yeah. of swing, you've got something's going to change, and that yeah. is the speed. speed yeah. yeah, so yeah. generally we see the golf club decelerating. Yeah. 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 Which uh, from uh, from all of us all of us golf coaches in the academy, that's uh, the number one fault we see with uh, with players' contact with the wedges, yeah. deceleration. And I've noticed this especially when I've been doing gapping sessions, that the guys come in, get to hit the wedge, and I say, there's, there's a bit of a you've got a bit of a gap there, you know, say between sure. you know 50 degree and a sand wedge. Okay. Um, so instantly, what I see, you've got the numbers up on there, swing speed, instantly they think right. I'll try, I'll try to slow it down. That's that's the big no-no. Okay, so we're still going to we're going to keep that rhythm. Keep yeah. we want that golf club yeah. accelerating. Yeah. yeah. So can you just elaborate a little bit more on the reference points, please? So we, I do mine by clock. Clock face, clock yeah. Face, yeah. So really a great great way to. Yeah. 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 So you've got um, so you can go to like seven thirty. Perhaps so, should we just yeah. turn around here? And so if you take your setup position yeah. there, so. Uh, so if you actually just take normal width stance, normal yeah. normal grip length, so golf club at so full length. Now if you make a full back swing there, Liv, so okay, so if we think of the clock face here, 12 o'clock at the top here, six down here, nine o'clock's gonna be here. So we class Olivia's full swim pretty much as say 10, 30. Yeah. yeah so yeah. the leading left arm here, reference point 10 30. Yeah. Okay. Now from there you're gonna go all the way through. So we get all the way through. Be careful not to hit the laptop. Brilliant. Okay. So, however far Olivia's going on that back swing, she's always going to increase the length on the through swing. So you've gone back to ten thirty, and you've gone all the way through there to say yeah. twelve o'clock. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that would be a full shot. So yeah. your next one would be. I'll go nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. Yeah. Okay. So Olivia's full ten thirty swing, as you can see, goes in excess of hundred yards. Yeah. So nine o'clock here, perfect. So that lead arm there gets to that horizontal yeah. point. And from there, we're going to go through perhaps to around about one o'clock. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Okay. <laughs> but the time is not. That's it. She forgot the time. Let's go again. So nine o'clock, one o'clock. Great. So it's so important, guys and girls, just to really increase the length of that through swing. So uh, if you notice, especially now, I haven't lost that rhythm. It's now the rhythm stays stayed the same. Pace, yeah. yeah. I noticed as well that naturally for the nine o'clock swing, you gripped it down a little yeah. bit. Yeah. And naturally, narrow you're standing a little bit narrower. Okay, so just by standing narrower, that will do what to our golf swing. So you just keep the rotation, keeps it narrower. He's able to make sure the arms don't go too high. Too up. high. Yeah. Also, the narrower we stand when when working with golfers, when hitting golf shots, balance is crucial, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah. So actually standing that little bit narrower, it, it almost it, it makes the golfer swing the golf for that little bit yeah. shorter as well. There to again keep, help improve keep that control. Just, keep control. Yeah. Should we hit some shots there at nine o'clock? Let them see uh, see how far they're going. Going, just about distance, 85.1 uh, yards. So before I, uh, before I, before we hit that shot, really, I should have asked you how far did the nine o'clock swing go, and you said 80, 85 yards. Okay. Should we go again? But this time, what I'd like to do. This is a big fault that we see with lots of golfers when changing distances. They look at the yardage, they pick their club, they go straight. They're looking at it, they go straight to the golf shot, and they hit. Yeah. Favorite saying of mine, we've got to find it before we do it. Okay, so you've heard me say that yeah, a thousand yeah. times to you, you know, working with you with your own, with your own golf game. So, can you explain what does that mean? So, it's just uh, the, the rehearsal. So, you, you get the feel for the shot, get the feel for the distance. Um, so, instead of going in blind, you know, it's like it's like any sort of sport, you yeah. know, even if you're playing bowls or something like that. Do you see if they, they all get that feel? I know you're a fan of bowls, you know. Yeah, they're a bit of okay. bowls. <laughs> <laughs> Great. 
Um, so yeah, but it's, it's all the same, isn't it? It's all about that feel, getting the all feel, about the the feel. I think especially for the, the when, it, when anything's not got a full shot, we've got to find that golf swing. So we've got to find the length, yeah. sorry, then we've got to find that speed. I mean, a great golfer to watch do this is Jordan Spieth. Oh. If you watch him, yeah. practice swing, practice swing, you can see him really focusing in at the distance he's hitting. And yeah, I think the big answer is going to be on not well. creating slow play as well. <laughs> so we want to keep yeah. playing moving. Yeah. We're going to get there and you know, make the most of it. This is essential. A couple of rehearsal swings, find the speed. Should we give that a go? Yeah. yeah. She's forgetting her hustle. Good. 85 yards, 89 yards. So straight away there, we can see a difference in distance. So we've gone for Olivia's full swings with the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, with the 58, which would go just over 100 yards. Yeah. You've gripped down with the, sorry, with the 58, with the 50, it's going just over 100 yards. You've gripped down and they go in just, just under 100 yards. You've now got a 9 o'clock swing and they go in pretty much 85 to, yeah. to 89 yards. So um, if you were to do that with your sand wedge, with your pitching wedge, your log wedge, we've got loads of differences yeah. covered, haven't we? Oh, yeah. Yeah, what a great way to spend a, a practice session working on exactly this. Yeah. Okay, um, now the other distance, if we're going to go for the clock face method, if you want to turn around again, just face yeah. the camera, Cliff, um, this is a favourite of mine and a favourite of uh, the, the guys and girls in the academy, is the next one would be literally the, the 731 here, so it's very much a shorter back swing, but again, on the way, so on the way through, we still want to go through and start that 3 o'clock position, okay? Yeah. So, this is something we want you to practice, and if, if, you know, it's just three lengths of swings, yeah. different wedges, you're going to get some great gapping scores there. Um, what about if people, I suppose, say, well, I don't like this clock phase, Rob, you know, what, 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 what can we use differently? So, so there's, there's, I mean, there's other reference points, you don't have to use a clock phase, you can use parts, parts of your body. Yeah, 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 so maybe hip or... So if you can go to hip or feel like the butt of the club's going into your thigh, yeah. um, arm, chest, yeah. you know, shoulder, yeah. it, it's whatever works for you and what, you, you know, you'd feel comfortable doing. And yeah. Something that you would remember. We've used that word a lot, feel. Yeah. A lot of it is all about the, the feel. Uh, yeah, so whatever works for you guys. I mean, that for us, um, as I said there, we've got some, um, Liv's really sharp from this, hence why we've, uh, we've invited Liv along today. It's a couple of subjects. She's really sharp with her wedges. Um, but whatever works for you, and I'm sure if you put this to, uh, to the test, guys and girls at home, you're going to see some great results there and consistency with your, with your yeah. gapping. Yeah. yeah? So I believe we've got a few questions um, uh, coming in. So we have, yeah, we've had uh, one on a direct message. And Rob, it says, uh, this is Steve from Solihull. Should I be taking big divots when I'm hitting my wedges? Steve from, from Solihull. Okay. I know Solihull very Steve. well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, uh, that's a good, uh, good question. Should we be taking big divots? Well, um, it depends really, Steve. This time of year, the ground's very, very soft yeah. as well. Um, so we can, so that golf club, is the golf club going to bottom out? Absolutely, yes indeed that golf club's got to bottom out. What we, uh, we've got a, a big advantage here with, uh, with the Trackman because it gives us our optimum how much we should be hitting down on the golf ball. So without chucking too much tech in there, we should be, that golf club should be striking down around about four degrees yeah. with, a, yeah. with, a, with a full swing with a wedge. Yeah. Uh, so what we're looking for, uh, when we have guys coming in for the gapping sessions, we straight away there, Trackman shows us exactly if they're hitting down or hitting up on the golf ball yeah. far too yeah. much. So yeah, we should be hitting down. Should we have a look at you hitting a couple there, Liv? And we'll have a look at your, um, your attack handle there. So here we go. So the last one you hit there, you were 3.1 degrees down on it. So should we go again? Yeah. And that was for a shorter shot, wasn't it? So, yeah. What are we hitting now for? Uh, let's hit a full shot, actually. Should we hit a full yeah. shot and see? So Steve, yes, we should be taking a divot. So lovely strike there, Olivia. So actually full. So 102 yards, uh, attack angle. It's still thinking about it. Should we go again? Actually, a little bit shallow. shallow. Now, Olivia, 
drives a ball great, yeah. don't you? Yeah. So, yeah, she really does. That's always been with my Achilles heel. Which so, yeah. perhaps uh, to kind of flip this around a little yeah. bit with Steve, obviously, when driving that golf ball, we want that golf ball in the off swing. Mm -hmm. Now, when hitting the wedges, we want to hit that golf yeah. you know, down on the golf ball. It, again, it depends. If we're on a real soggy, soggy lie and we're hitting down too much, all of a sudden, if that golf club bottoms out just a fraction of an inch behind the golf ball, yeah. and it really affects contact. So, there'll be times where we want to catch it a little bit shallower. And then times where you want to hit that kind of optimum divot size, yeah? yeah. Looks like you've got a bit of a tricky question there. Well, we have, we've, we've got a couple. Um, so a couple coming from the comments from the live feed that we've got going today. Um, with David J. Monks, continuing from last week, I'm hoping to increase my swing speed. Can Trackman help me? Can Trackman help you increase uh, swing speed? Um, Trackman can certainly um, help with efficiency. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, what Trackman bases uh, the distances and the, the efficiency based on your actual swing speed. Trackman itself um, can help in increase swing speed based on the way you are delivering the golf club, but my strong advice there would be uh, to you know, hook up with your local PGA Pro there, who's going to really help maximise your actual club speed. Okay, bro. Uh, and one more, it's a bit of a curveball, so we'll squeeze this as the last one in there. Love it. Uh, Danny Badrock would like to know, guys, you have a table for four in a restaurant, which three golfers are joining you? Table for four in a restaurant, which three golfers are joining us? Right. Let's join you first, ladies first. <laughs> um, I mean, you've got to have the goat. The goat. The goat. The, the goat. Greatest of all time. time yeah. Right, okay. So, Tiger Woods. I mean, well, you know, what a career he's had, and I think it'd be quite interesting uh, Absolutely. getting some other gossip, maybe off the golf course as well. Yeah, Tiger. Yeah. It's great to hear uh, yeah, Tiger's yeah, coming back as well, yeah? Yeah. yeah. In his host, his host so event. I think it's a lot of stories there, and I think it'd be in interesting. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Tiger, Tiger's got to be there. Yeah. yeah. First, first to table. Yeah. Uh, now, if my my hero, uh, my eye looking growing up um, is was Semi. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Semi was uh, actually would have been would have been so uh, privileged and amazing to meet uh, the great man himself, uh, Semi. So um, if this was kind of open, um, yeah, Semi would definitely be at dinner table with me. Yeah. So Tiger, Semi, yeah, do you wanna? <laughs> we go from the LPGA. So who's yeah, so yeah, in for you then, Leigh? From do you know? Um, Susan Pedersen. Susan Pedersen, yeah. Yeah, um, I don't know, I've, I've always I've always liked Susan. Um, she's an absolutely great player. Um, she's yeah. been around for many years. Always been played to a great standard. Sure. Um, I think she's actually done a lot for the, for the ladies' game. She's been a few controversial moments um, with the Solheim Cup, etc. Absolutely, but yeah, she's, yeah. A, she's a true team player. Yeah, and, cool. And um, loves the game of golf. Suzanne would be great to have at the table. If we could open it out to, uh, to present day as well, uh, do you know what? I'd love to pick John Spieth's brains. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that guy is something else, isn't he? You know, for such a, an old head on young, young shoulders. Um, sorry, Arnie, Jack, yeah, we'd love to have you as well. There's too many to choose from. Too many to choose from. Great. Okay, guys, I think um, that's, uh, that's just about time on the, uh, the Facebook Live uh, this week, so thank you so much for, uh, for watching. Uh, if you like what we're doing, uh, please give us a like, uh, give us a comment as well. Um, we're open for, uh, for suggestions for content uh, for next week. Uh, we shall be joined for two more coaches next week. Um, I think I'm going to have a week off next, uh, next Tuesday. So uh, from myself uh, and from, from Olivia um, and from the team, have a fantastic week. And uh, yeah, see you soon.